is, and we might have mentioned here on this program and many other programs have pointed out that some of those new pieces are a little old new pieces. <laughs> LeBron James took to Twitter to fire back at the critics, and here is what he said. Keep talking about my squad, our personal ages, the way he plays, he stays injured, we're past our prime in this league, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do me one favor, please, and I mean please, keep that same narrative energy when it begins. That's all I ask. Thank you. Jalen, he later deleted this. Why do you think he went with the tweet and delete? LeBron, you know how much I love him. Here's the deal, David Jacoby. So put that tweet back up there if it's okay. So are we allowed to acknowledge that the Lakers have the oldest team on paper in the history of the league? Are we allowed to actually just say that? Is that yes. okay? Are yes. we allowed to point out a fact that Anthony Davis and or LeBron James likely due to injury or load management won't play 82 games this year? Is that okay? And last but certainly not least, I'm glad he didn't use the term hating, but that's what is construed by so many people. And you've heard me say this for a decade. This generation uses the term hating incorrectly, okay? Just because I may disagree with you or have a differing opinion than yours, it does not mean that I'm hating. And also, is LeBron playing victim? Hold on, so, so let me yes. get this right. The favorite, LeBron James, who went to Miami, played with Bosh and Wade, went to Cleveland, played with Kyrie and Love, came to LA and played with AD, and now remade his roster to where he got an MVP like Russ and a score Hall of Famer like Melo. So, so, so the Lakers, the underdog? Yeah, that's, is, is, that's is, what is he's that doing. what we doing here, Jacoby? He's now saying, look at us, we're the underdogs. People are doubting <laughs> us. Like, no one's doubting you, LeBron. Matter of fact, <laughs> if you look at the Las Vegas odds for who's going to win the championship, the Lakers are right up there with the Nets. They are not underdogs. They are favorites. They are favorites. They're the, the favorites to come out of the West. They've got Hall of Famers up and down the roster. They've got shooting. They've got defense. They've got a, a player at every position. Like, no one is doubting you, LeBron James. You are not the underdogs. It's actually the exact opposite of that. But he, I love the way he does this. He really does control the narrative. And he even used the word narrative in his tweet that he was controlling as well. Oh, I, I love this Lakers team so much. I do have them coming out of the Western Conference. I'm not doubting you, LeBron. You are the favorite to win the conference. No one is doubting you. Well, Jalen Rose from one superstar MVP to another. This challenge, not one of these fake challenges where if the Nets are healthy like last year, oh, LA's healthy, the Nets are healthy. I think the Lakers are going to be. No, they weren't going to. No one was going to take a healthy Nets team seven games. You saw what, what, what KD just with Kyrie, without James Harden last year, without Harden who was the, game for game the best player in the league last year. Just KD and Kyrie were whooping up on the Bucks, who won the championship so bad early, it was embarrassing. It was a mismatch. That Without Harden, who was the glue guy, the guy who made it all work, who was running really D'Antoni's offense and all of that. Now, what's happened since then? If, these, if the Nets are healthy, they have, I want you to think about this carefully, Marcus Spears, they have at their size, the three greatest all-around scorers. They can score from anywhere, whoever lived, at their size. You know, Harden's like 6'5". Yeah, I'm not saying he's better than Michael Jordan scoring the ball. I'm saying, tell, show me anyone 6'2 who could score like Kyrie from anywhere. Free throw line, three point line, lay, you know, layup package with the handles, the whole thing. Same thing with Harden, same thing with KD at 6'11". Three greatest scorers from anywhere who ever lived at their size. Now, what else do they have? We saw Blake Griffin posterize Giannis last year in the playoffs. Why is that significant? Blake's, Blake's value was never because of some refined skill. It's because he could do that. And he's your fourth option? And Joe Harris is your fifth option? Now you got Patty Mills off the bench? I'm sorry. The Lakers made a lot. That Westbrook trade was amazing for them. People who criticize it are out of their minds. Second half of the season, Lakers will take off. They don't have enough shooting to beat the Nets, period. So outscoring the Lakers is 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 how you're building the Nets, uh, winning the championship. That's yeah, that's primarily. what you're that's what you're saying because you mentioned those three guys. Listen, we 
first of all, let, let me say this. I mad respect for KD, Kyrie, and James Harden and what the Nets have done. But are you seriously going to sit on television and tell me that when you get to a seven-game series with LeBron, AD, and Russell Westbrook, that it, you you just chalking it up as it being that easy to beat them in the playoffs? No. We've seen LeBron do this a number of times, Max. We've seen him as an underdog, under down 3-1, be able to understand the game enough and figure out how to beat a basketball team with uber talent or a team that's more talented than them. When you look at what the Lakers did, here, here's the best part of what the Lakers did. They removed Anthony Davis from the five by bringing in Dwight Howard. That's the move that changes everything for the Lakers. Last year, we had this conversation, and, and barring health, but health is, health is talked about with both of these teams. As long as they're healthy, you're going to hear that a thousand times from now until the basketball season and until we get to the finals. And Lord knows I'm praying that I, I hope both of them meet up in the finals. I understand all that you just said, but here's the thing about basketball. And you've, you've talked about this a bunch, Max. Usually the best team wins. You're talking about three guys right now. And we, we're mentioning the big three guys. I want the team that's led by LeBron James. I don't care who playing on the other side. As long as the talent is not a big discrepancy, which I don't think it is, because we're still talking about AD as a top five player in his position of all time. We're still talking about Russell Westbrook, who's going to put pressure on Kyrie or James or whoever is guarding him to play both ends of the court. We're still talking about LeBron James. You bring Dwight Howard in to be a guy around the rim to protect the rim. I understand about Blake Griffin, but dude, the Lakers ain't going to be worried about Blake Griffin in no damn final series. They're going to be interested in making sure that they take away one or two of these guys that you just mentioned as that front court for a three. Now, let's get to the point about the game, like the actual end game and what type of adjustments will be made. Here's the deal, Max. When the Bucks were playing the Nets and when we were watching that game, we had Giannis who didn't want to go out and defend KD in crunch time situations. We understand that KD is the best scorer that we've ever seen in the NBA. But KD going to have to play both ends of the floor, too. He can. And, and Kyrie Irving is going to have to play both ends of the floor. He can, and James too. James Harden is going to have to play both ends of the floor. Not and so much with Harden. Listen, Max, you, do you think there will be any level of comfort on Kyrie Irving when he has Let me say this. Russell I think this is what I think, Marcus. Do I think the Lakers give them a real series. I think that before they acquired Westbrook, people were deluding themselves. Now that they have Westbrook, do, they have they a win. legitimate answer to the Nets. They're the one team in the league, if everyone's healthy, that has a legitimate answer. I don't know if it's the right answer, but yeah. it is a legitimate answer. I think that's an extended series. It's going to be tough. Here's the difference. When you just brought up Dwight Howard, for example, Dwight Howard with A.D., LeBron, and Westbrook, who like, no one of anyone I just mentioned shoots the ball over average for their position. And at the four, A.D. probably doesn't even shoot it average. If you call him a five, he probably does. Dwight does only in the paint. LeBron's not a pure shooter. He shoots it well enough for, as a three or a four. Westbrook doesn't shoot it well enough. Who's, and so you're starting Wayne Ellington, I guess, and that's your best shooter on the floor. There's not, like, they're going to be vicious to the rest of the league. But when you match up against the Nets team with Kyrie, Harden, Harris, Blake, and KD. The re of course, they're not worried about Blake. If mm -hmm. he's the number one or two option, he's your fourth option. Joe Harris is the best fifth option. Mm -hmm. Fifth option? And he's always going to be open. Always. Because you're going to have to double guys. When you look at LeBron and he came back down 3-1 against that super team Warriors team, once they added KD... They ran up the white flag in Cleveland. They had nothing they could do. I don't even blame them. It's just too much on one team. And when and you look was, at that and, Warriors and it's team. Not even, and it's not even it, close to this situation, Max. Well, well the, he has Westbrook as we, his number three. That's a big thing. What I'm saying is this Nets team, when healthy, is, has more offensive yeah. firepower than that Warriors team that LeBron didn't have a shot.